Who built the staircase of Santa Fe? Hi guys. Today we'll look at this question. This is a beautiful spiral staircase in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is known as the miraculous staircase. And it's also wondered who built it. So we'll look at this today. But first, Santa Fe is a Spanish name, which means holy faith. And because faith is the key word there, I thought we'd start with this document. It's called Faith and Reason. It's an encyclical written by the late great St. John Paul II. And he said, faith and reason are like two wings on which the human spirit rises to the contemplation of truth. God has placed in the human heart a desire to know the truth. The truth will set you free, as the good book says. So as Christians, we should go by faith and reason. We should not be credulous, believing too easily things without evidence. We should not go by blind faith or faith alone, but we should go by faith and reason. Get the facts, decide for yourself. So to do that, we have to start in France. Why France? Because that's where Bishop Jean Baptiste LeMay came from. He came to the United States. He was in Baltimore for a time, and he was named the first bishop of Santa Fe. Now, he knew to do his job well, he needed to find a religious order of sisters who would help staff the hospital and the school. So he looked far and wide, but he couldn't find any until finally, thankfully, in Kentucky, he found the Sisters of Laredo. So these six sisters went with him, and it was a long and perilous journey. In fact, of those six sisters, only four made it to Santa Fe. Unfortunately, one had to return to Kentucky, and one died in Kansas City. The Sisters of Laredo. If you go there today, you'll see this historical marker that talks about Mother Magdalene Hayden and her sisters. Mother Magdalene was one tough cookie. There was almost nothing she could not do thanks to her prayers and hard work. It is said that she influenced more people of New Mexico and the West than any other woman. And it was thanks to her initiative to do a nine-day novena to St. Joseph the Worker that we see this beautiful spiral staircase still standing today. The year was 1881. On the right, you see the Santa Fe Cathedral built between 1869 to 1887. And the uh, probably the first thing you notice is that there's no staircase in that one. On the left, the Santa Fe Chapel built from 1873 to 1878 it has a staircase, but that staircase was added in 1881. The handrails were added by Philip Hesch in 1887. And if you're thinking that these two churches look similar, it's because of the French architects, Antoine Moulet and his son Projectus, who built these two churches. In fact, the beautiful round stained glass windows atop both choir lofts were brought all the way over to Santa Fe from France, as well as some other items that were imported from France. So the key year I want you to remember here is 1881. Now the spiral staircase uh, originally had no handrails. Those were added later. The two churches are quite close, only three minutes apart. And this is what they look like on the outside, a sight to behold these French Gothic architecture churches back in 1881 in the arid uh, southwest of New Mexico. You can only imagine. At that time, it was populated only by people from Spain and Mexico. So it was thanks to the French bishop who brought his French culture and architecture with him. For example, the Chapel Laredo was patterned after the very famous Saint Chapelle Chapel in Paris. If you go there today, it is now a museum, which on the sign says it has a miraculous staircase. Now that's an important word. So I thought we would do well to look in the catechism to see how we should define the word miracle. A miracle is a sign or wonder such as a healing 
or control of nature, which can only be attributed to divine power. The chapel and hotel are owned by Maggie Anderson's family. Her father, Jim Kilpatrick, purchased the chapel in 1971 for commercial purposes. For example, the chapel, the minister, flowers, photography, etc., cetera, uh, can be purchased for $5,500 US dollars for a wedding package. And of course, the main selling point is the beautiful, mysterious spiral staircase. So today it's known as the Inn and Spa at Laredo, Santa Fe. So it's basically a chapel and a spa. I came across this website, which I found quite interesting because it says that their annual revenue is just under $1 million a year. I found that really interesting. In fact, it kind of raises a question mark in my mind, at least, because money can sometimes be a motivational factor. Who built the staircase of Santa Fe? Here's a picture of what it may have looked like originally, because originally it had no handrails, but also originally it, it didn't have the, the bottom there. You see the yellow, the lighter yellow color. Uh, that was not there originally. Originally it was more like uh, empty on the bottom, but they added that bottom to make it look nicer later. And then also they added the handrails for safety. So there's basically four carpenters to consider. If you research this, uh, these are the four names that will come up. Francois-Jean Rochas, or Rocas. He was a French immigrant. Johann Hadwiger, an Austrian immigrant. Philip Hesch, a German immigrant, who you just heard his name because he's the one that added the handrails. Or St. Joseph, a heavenly immigrant. Up in the choir loft, by the way, there's a wooden organ. That's an air organ, and it was imported from France by the man who invented the air organ. So most historians and research uh, people will say that it gets down to two options, Frenchy or St. Joseph. It took three months to build this beautiful spiral staircase. Other sources said six to eight months. But I want you to ask yourself this question. How long should it take a saint from heaven to do the job? Well, if you look at Knock Ireland apparition and or Fatima in Portugal, even if you combine both of those most famous apparitions of St. Joseph, it would not even come close to a three-month apparition. So think about that. I mean, if St. Joseph built this staircase, I mean, that would be the longest apparition in church history. Three months. I mean, that would be pretty cool. You know, just St. Joseph living there, building the staircase over a three to six month continuous period. Something to think about. So was it St. Joseph the carpenter or Frenchy the compagnon? What's a compagnon? Glad you asked. Etymologically, it means he with whom one shares one's bread. It's where we get the word companion. And if you look at the compagnons, they were a secret celibate carpenter guild that popped up during the Middle Ages, and they built buildings, monuments, and even one compagnon named Eugene Milon helped to build the Eiffel Tower. If you Google Compagnon, you'll come across their museum in France. And lo and behold, in the museum, it has a spiral staircase. In fact, if you Google Compagnon's staircase, wow, it seems to be their specialty, building spiral staircases. It is indeed a work of art. If you Google Francois-Jean Rocas, you come up with a French Wikipedia, which you can then translate to English, and you'll find out some cool stuff about this person, where he was born and when. And interestingly, it says he left France in 1880. Now, remember the year 1881 was the year that the staircase in question was built. So that would fit perfectly in the uh, timeline. Frenchy was Catholic. 
And I thought it was pretty cool that of his siblings, he had a brother named Joseph and a sister named Josephine. On the second page of that Wikipedia, it says that he died in Dog Canyon, which is an important point we'll look at later. And it also says point blank that it was Frenchie who built the staircase at Santa Fe. Now I'll link this below so you can look at it in more detail later. Another interesting video, if you look up the story of Francois-Jean Rocas, also known as Frenchie of Dog Canyon, the Alamogordo High School did a 20 minute video where they did a research project on this person because they're trying to figure out how he died in Dog Canyon. So the first few minutes of the video, it talks about the famous staircase of the Laredo Chapel. And it says that Frenchy came across on the SS St. Laurent um, immigrant cargo ship. If you look at where he was born in Vif Isseri, France, you'll see this beautiful church on the left called St. Jean Baptiste. It has a very high bell tower. And it makes me wonder if there was a spiral staircase in there as well. I also found it interesting that there is a famous St. Joseph church only about 22 minutes by car away from his home in Grenoble, France. So if you have any information, I couldn't find out what the inside of this church looked like, but if you can find it, please put it in the comments section below. I did find other churches in France, such as this one of the 17th century, that did have a wooden spiral staircase ascending up to the bell tower loft. Elsewhere around the world, such as in Poland in the 15th century, and the United States in 1870s, we find spiral staircases without center supports, similar to the one in Santa Fe. If you look at the obituary for Frenchie, it says a later uh, excuse me, a letter from Las Cruces to Mr. Quintus Monnier of date yesterday states that Frank Roaches was found dead at his ranch house near La Luz a few days ago. His friends believe that it was a, that he was assassinated as previous attempts have been made. He was a Frenchman and was favorably known in Santa Fe as an expert worker in wood. He built the handsome staircase of the Laredo Chapel and at St. Vincent Sanatorium. Now, unfortunately, the San Vincent uh, Sanatorium burnt down in 1896, and I couldn't find any images of what the staircase looked like. If you can find it, again, please post in the comments section below. So I don't know if it was a spiral staircase as beautiful as the one in Laredo or not, uh, but we do know what the one in Laredo looks like, thankfully, uh, even though uh, the Laredo Chapel was closed down in 1968. Um, and then later sold as previously mentioned. So this is what you can find if you Google the Santa Fe New Mexican uh, obituary for January 5th, 1895. You can also see his tombstone because he's buried at Our Lady of the Light Catholic Cemetery. And it's about a three hour and 21 minute car ride from there to Laredo Chapel in Santa Fe. Doing the math, we can figure out that he was 51 when he was shot, and he was 38 in 1881 when the staircase was built. Here's a picture on the left of Frenchie's cabin, uh, basically a, a stone cabin in Dog Canyon. Elsewhere on the internet, we can learn that among Roach's possessions upon his death was an unmailed letter addressed to Mr. Quintus Monnier a brick company owner in charge of building chapels and schools for the Santa Fe diocese under Bishop Jean Baptiste Lemay, another Frenchman. So those were both Frenchmen. It was he who had contracted Rocas to build the staircase. Two other unmailed letters were also found in his cabin addressed to Lemay and dealt with other work Rocas had done for the church. So three key figures here in this story are all from France. Uh, Frenchie, Bishop LeMay, and Mr. Monnier. Bishop Jean-Baptiste LeMay, the first Bishop of Santa Fe, died in 1888, or seven years after the staircase was built. So during that time, did Bishop LeMay uh, mention anything about the miraculous staircase or St. Joseph building it? No record of him saying it was miraculous or built by St. Joseph is documented.
nor did any other Santa Fe bishop, except 10 bishops later, we do hear this, quote, it will always be referred to as a miraculous staircase. It was an extraordinary piece to have been done in its time, end quote. And that's from the former 11th Archbishop of Santa Fe, Michael Sheehan, who, by the way, is from Wichita, Kansas. He unfortunately had to resign in 2015 due to Alzheimer's disease. So this one um, favorable quote, if I could put it that way, that would you know lean towards it being miraculous, comes from this book, Mysterious New Mexico, Miracles, Magic, and Monsters in the Land of Enchantment. Now, this quote, if you read it carefully, could be interpreted in different ways. Uh, he's not saying it's miraculous, but he says it will always be referred to as that way. Um, and he says it's extra extraordinary in its time, uh, which it is, because even today it's pretty amazing. Uh, I mean, they have um, you know engineers come in and look at it, and they're still baffled at how amazing this you know the staircase is. So I thought, well, let's just see what the Diocese of Santa Fe website says, right? I mean, we should be able to get the answer there. What does it say? Nada. If you put in staircase, it comes up with not a word about this staircase. I found that interesting. So I sent them an email. And the vicar general wrote back and said, whoever built the staircase has always been a matter of speculation. No official records exist that I'm aware of. Whoever built the staircase has always been a matter of speculation. No official records exist that I'm aware of. Hmm, interesting. Well, who else can we ask? I know. Let's ask the Sisters of Laredo. Let's see what they say. Thank you for your research request. Unfortunately, the Sisters of Laredo do not have a definitive answer as to who built the staircase. Our records from the, that time period are spotty, and all we have are much later recollections of, mysterious, of the mysterious event. The accounts differ from each other, but they do agree that the carpenter left before being paid and that the identity of the carpenter was unknown. Currently, some of the Laredo community members believe Mary J. Straw Cooks to be the most likely explanation. She believed the carpenter to be Frenchy. So when they refer to Cook, they're talking about this book on the left. Historian Mary Cook uncovered documents relating to the construction, including an 1881 entry in the Sisters' Day Book, which said, paid for wood, Mr. Roach's, $150. Now, keep in mind, it was 1881, and that was a lot of money back then. What kind of wood? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now, there are some trees around the chapel in this picture, but let us look at what type of tree might have been used to build the uh, staircase. And the reason that we want to look at this is because I saw in one source that said it allegedly came from Nazareth. So that's a pretty big claim that would definitely um, lend itself well to this being a miraculous staircase. So let us see. If you Google this, you'll come up with the Wikipedia article that tells us that it's made of spruce. And it says, scientifically not identified anywhere else in the world. Now that's interesting, depending on how you interpret that sentence. Does it mean that it just simply has not yet been scientifically identified? Or does it mean like it came from outer space? I mean, it is New Mexico after all, and it's home of Roswell, where you know, the mysterious, the strange, and the out of this world do sell quite well to tourists. Something to keep in mind. But if you look at uh, this research done by wood technologists, Forrest N. Easley, and I mean, if you're going to be a wood technologist, the best name to have would be Forrest, right? How cool is that? So Forrest tells us that between Sitka spruce and Engelman spruce, is what he found when he analyzed it. And 
you know, it falls somewhere between a Sitka and an Engelman. And Mr. Easley proposed to call it Joseph Easley Spruce in his autobiography. So what do these trees look like? So on the left, you have the Sitka Spruce and the Engelman Spruce. And I put the staircase between these two because again, um, Mr. Easley said that it falls between a Sitka spruce and an Engelman spruce. Sitka comes from Northern California and northward, whereas Engelman comes from Northern New Mexico and northward. And take a good look at these pictures because this is what a Sitka spruce looks like on the left and an Engelman spruce on the right. Sometimes people are baffled at, wow, how did they get the wood to that location? Because some sources say that, you know, spruce is not indigenous to New Mexico. Well, that one previous chart showed that it is indigenous in Northern New Mexico, at least the Engelman spruce. Nevertheless, even if it came from elsewhere, the railroad track system between 1870 and 1890 was such that it would be uh, doable to get wood shipped to Santa Fe. It might not be quick, but it would eventually get there. Keep in mind, they did ship items all the way from France to Santa Fe. So did the wood come from Nazareth? Well, if you Google spruce trees in Nazareth, this is what you find. You don't see any spruce trees, at least according to Google. The closest is a Jerusalem pine. Now, a pine tree, although similar looking, is not a spruce. In this picture, I found Mount Precipice in Nazareth. Now, I want to first emphasize that I am no wood technician. And my untrained eye tells me that the top picture is different from the bottom left or the bottom right. The bottom right is an Engelman spruce. The bottom left is a Sitka spruce. The top, I'm going to wager a guess that that might be a pine tree, Jerusalem pine tree, perhaps. If you have more information, please put it in the comments section below. So who built the staircase of Santa Fe? St. Joseph the Carpenter or Frenchy the Compagnon? Well, it could be either or. It could also be both and something to consider. In fact, that's what Father Edward Looney hints at in his wonderful five minute video. This is probably the best and shortest video I've seen on this topic. Uh, you want to definitely look this up. I'll post it in the comment section below and give you a hyperlink so you can find it quickly. But in a nutshell, he talks about the mysterious man who could be the Saint Joseph behind the staircase. He also, points out that it is no longer a Catholic institution. It's just a museum. Therefore, uh, it would not be a sacramental Catholic marriage if you were to get married there, even though it is quite beautiful, the chapel. Another video that I'll hyperlink is The Staircase. It's a wonderful old movie done by Barbara Hershey and William Peterson. And on the cover there, it says, her faith made a miracle his creation made a legend. Very similar uh, balanced view as Father Edward Looney. So the main two things I hope we all agree on is that we need to pray like those sisters and work like St. Joseph. Work like St. Joseph. And pray like those sisters. Work hard, pray hard. If we do that, I believe the puzzle pieces of this mystery start to fit together quite well. I leave the answer in your hands. St. Joseph, the worker, pray for us.